Hello, my name is Stu. If you're new here, this channel is all about breaking down different technologies into easily digestible chunks. In this video, we're going to take a look at adding DynamoDB as a persistence layer to our Hello World grain. Just to refresh your memory from the previous video, our Hello World grain has a simple say hello to method that has the invocation count on it. To start adding state to the Hello World crane, one of the things we will need to do is create a new class to manage the state. So let's do that now. I'm going to create a new class called Hello State with a property called Invocation Count to mirror what we have in our Hello World grain. Next, we're going to change the grain type to a grain type of hello state. And this now gives us a few new properties and methods such as the state property and allowing us to store the state. So the first thing we're going to need to do is remove this private field for invocation count. And make the method asynchronous in nature. And then we can do var count equals state which gives us all the properties on our state, such as invocation count. And then we can do the plus plus as we have done on the line below. Next, we can await the saving of the state. This ensures that we always have the correct state saved in DynamoDB. Next, we can simply return the string and replace the invocation count with the count from above. So the next thing that we're going to need to do is add a new NuGet package. So I'll right click on the project and click manage NuGet packages. And then for simplicity, I'm going to search for Orleans Dynamo. And you will see the Microsoft Orleans .dynamo DB. So I'm going to click install. And that is now installed. Next, we need to modify the program.cs file. This is where we have previously configured the Orleans silo. We're going to add a new line on line 23, and we're going to call builder.addDynamoDB grain storage as default and pass in an options lambda, which we're going to go and configure. On the options, we need to set the service property equal to HTTP colon four slash four slash localhost four five six six. This tells Orleans that the Dynamo instance that we're talking to is on the local host and it is on port four five six six. The next thing we need to do is make sure that we have an image up and running in DynamoDB. I have already got this DynamoDB instance set up through the local stack image. And if you're not familiar with local stack, it is a Docker image which mimics the running of AWS services. And this is running on port 4566, and we're only running the DynamoDB service. So the next thing I'm going to do is just ensure that my Docker image is running by running Docker Compose up. Now that is running, I can click run on my hello world. And you can see that my invocation account is zero. And as I refresh, the count is saved. So we're gonna go up to 10 and then we're gonna close the window and the application will shut itself down because we're in debug mode. If I press F5 to run again, the application will start up and the state is loaded and we have now called hello 11 times. So it's remembered the previous 10 times that we've gone through and run this demo. Now we can take a look at what the state is actually storing using the Amazon NoSQL Workbench, which I have open here. You can add a new connection 
select DynamoDB local and name it whatever you want and make sure you put in the port 4566. When you have that, you can have a look on the table section on the left hand side, click on the table to open it up and then you can see that we have something stored inside of here and we have the state stored for us. As you can see from the screen, we have a column called binary state. You can also store the state as a JSON object, which may make it easier for you to use things like Dynamo Streams later on in the future. So let's go and configure that now. We'll go back to our Orleans application, go to program.cs, and add a new line to this options and say options.useJSON equals true. We will need to restart our Docker Compose, so let me do that. If you're following along at home and you switch between binary state and JSON state, then you may need to clear your state and repopulate it in order to do the migration. So now we have this change, I'm going to hit F5. Refresh the page a couple of times. And then I'm going to go and look in the workbench and refresh the table. And now you can see I have the JSON string. So hopefully now you understand how to add DynamoDB as a persistence layer in Microsoft Orleans. If you liked the video, please hit the like button and subscribe to get notifications when new videos become available. In the next video, we're going to take a look at clustering with DynamoDB. See you next time.